Welcome back, Adam here. As usual, I want to update you with any moves that I'm making in the market and what a market is at the moment. This week, the S&P 500 has repeatedly hit new highs. The Nasdaq 100 brushed the 15,000 mark on Wednesday and the Dow Jones also recorded fresh new highs following what was a sharp pullback in early June. Across the pond in the UK, the FTSE hasn't fared so well recently, which is probably why my portfolio isn't as happy as the US markets. At the same time, inflation tops 5.4% annualized in the US. The UK also recorded its highest inflation figures for three years. We've also seen more senior figures expressing their opinion that this inflation may be here to stay with investment fund BlackRock's chief, Larry Fink, saying he does not agree with the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, and feels that this inflation is not going to be transitory. In light of all this, you might expect me to tell you that I've been closing positions and taking some profits in preparation for an upcoming market crash. Well, actually that's not the case and instead I've been doubling down, putting more money into the market. So I wanna share with you three stocks that I've been buying this week and how they might be impacted by inflation concerns. The first stock is online fashion retailer ASOS. Now, these guys recently purchased the brands Top Man, Top Shop, and Miss Selfridge from the failed Arcadia Group as part of a £265 million deal. In 2020, those brands generated £160 million of online sales. Prior to lockdowns, when stores were open in 2019, those brands bought in around a billion pounds. So I don't think that investment will take long to pay for itself. And I actually think it will have a material impact on their results over the next few years. The reason I've been buying ASOS today is because they've just reported earnings, which were pretty solid, to be honest. Big revenue growth, but they did talk about a softening in demand in the last three weeks of the period. They said they expect this to continue, but they still expect full year results to be in line with expectations. Now, that doesn't actually sound too bad for me, kind of what you would expect as the economy reopens for what is a online retailer. But as a result, the stock fell 15% and dipped below £40 a share. This is after falling about 5% the previous day. So I've absolutely loaded the boat on this one. If that isn't an overreaction to an earnings forecast, then I don't know what is. The second stock I've been buying is Ilica, my solid state battery technology company. I actually gave an update on Ilica last week and the very same day the video went out, they announced a big issuing of new shares, which obviously rocked the share price. The new issue is available to both institutional investors and retail investors at a price of £1.40 per share. So I'm actually buying because I'm taking part in the rights issue. Nonetheless, I'm actually happy to increase my position here. Now, when they made the announcement, Ilica was trading at £2 a share and the new shares were gonna be discounted by 30%, which is how they got to the price of £1.40. Since then, the share price has dropped as low as £1.46. So even if you're not an existing shareholder in Ilica, by buying in at these current prices, you're almost getting the discount anyway. Again, Ilica isn't a stock that will necessarily perform well in times of high inflation, but this is an investment and it's a very long-term investment at that, so I'm just looking for good entry points. And the third stock I've been buying even more of, as this is actually already my largest position, it's Jet2. In the immediate term, we still have that COVID risk, but trading conditions are getting better for them. Demand in the US and in Asia as well for travel in general has bounced back very quickly. So I think it will be the same in Europe as we get moving. More and more people being double vaccinated certainly helps. But what I really like is that this is a bit of an inflation hedge. There isn't too much growth priced in. They make their money here and now, and they have a lot of pricing power. In particular, when demand for travel is high relative to the supply, which is gonna be the case for the next couple of years, they have a lot of pricing power. So I think if you're looking for a hedge against inflation, then Jet2 isn't a bad place to be once we've taken away the COVID concerns. Let me know what stocks you've been buying recently and what I should be checking out. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.